Really plum to me. Frustration for Johnson Charles and a second wicket for Pactia. Johnson Charles out for 22 just as he was getting going. And Nangaha Leopards 39 for two. Ramat Shah in at number four. He's been up and down the order. The first couple of matches he played, he was at number four. Then he didn't bat against Kabul. Number five against Bolk. Number six against Kabul. Seven last night against Kandahar. So uh, he's earned a promotion on the back of 17 that he scored yesterday evening from 15 balls. The Afghans talk very highly of Ramat Khan's batting ability. Another clever delivery by Sharifi, and of course he bowled very well, did the start on with the ball, his leggies Ramat Khan a couple of matches ago, so valuable all-rounder. This is why he's here, and I don't think it gets any more plumb than that. Yeah, well he might argue that uh, it struck my front foot and just about the knee roll or, or above, oh, aggression by Sharifi. But the, the fact is he didn't take a big stride out, so he was just sort of half cock right there, it might have struck leg stump, we think. Edged too far away from the diminutive captain who's back to his keeping. And that's another Salureza. Off the mark in none too convincing fashion, Ramit Shah. He was player of the match a few nights ago against Kabul when uh, he took uh, three for 25. And uh, well, you have to give uh, marks to Mohamed Shazad for the dive there. Perhaps uh, 9.9 .9 for style with the judges, but uh, he was never going to get a glove on that one. Well, you took the words out of my mouth. I was about to ask you, so what are your marks for that one? But uh, plenty of commitment. Nowhere near the ball, though. Well done, Mohamed Shazad. Slower one that went wrong. Yet, oh, this could be tight. A direct throw. He was gone. Very dangerous, but he survived. Six overs gone. Power play up. 44 for two. Add baad mein skip karna. Asli game to yaha hone wali hai. Right pe hai chicken karai aur left pe mutton karai. Aur faisla aapke haath mein hai. Power plays over then, 44 for two, but it could so easily have been 43 for three. Shinwari with the throw at short mid-wicket, and how about that for a leap by uh, Anil Chowdhury, the highest of the night, I reckon. Well, he must have been a very keen hurdler in his youth. But he survives, and so does the batsman. <laughs> well, you've heard the expression, someone's for the high jump. And uh, I think Anil Chowdhury was most assuredly for the high jump there. Here's Shahid Afridi, fresh from a break last night. Didn't play in the defeat at the hands of the Bulk Legends. What can you do with the ball now? Well, in the Gulbahar, Afghanistan Premier League, powered by Fogg, he's uh, been much of a, much more of a bowler for his side so far. The Bhaktiya Panthers hasn't really been among the runs at all. Of course, he bats a little late when time is short. But uh, Chris Gale, the other huge T20 star, limited over star, has finally come good earlier today. Maybe it's an opportunity or an occasion for Shai the Freedy to show the world, and certainly the league here, that he is the boss of, well, some other part of the universe. Ooh, maybe uh, it, it got the bottom of the bat, I think, there. We'll check. Looked like the bottom of the bottom to me, actually. Uh, that was uh, the leg break. 
and uh, Devsic didn't pick it. <laughs> well, Brian, you spotted it well. Oh, just short of the man at cover. Nice dive put, and we like that commitment, but Devsic is just completely out of sorts today. Oh, Ramatullah, we hope you're okay. Yeah, Ramanullah Gurbas diving forward, really bold attempt to take the catch. But again, Devsic all at sea in terms of picking a Freedy's variations. Ramalcha rocks back and he will be taken with all oh, spelt. Gurbas who put in a nice knock with a bat earlier on, had plenty of time to sight that got there it was a little low but i think he just went a little hard at it and uh, out it spilt absolutely charu hard hands the culprit there he was still wringing his hands from the uh, the incident the ball before look at that just uh, not cushioning the ball in at all just uh, lunging for it and uh, free deep well words uh, not necessary oh and uh, a fumble from shazad down the leg side now, I rather fancy that fumble has cost them a wicket. Did uh, Devsic get back? Well, just on first impression, I think Devsic had given up. And then he realized that there's a fumble. Might as well try and get the back in, bat in. But maybe Devsic was late because of that hesitation or that resignation earlier on saying, oh, I'm gone. Here we go. That shouldn't be a problem. It isn't the front foot. And now to the business end. Mohamed Shahzad, not their number one keeper, we suspect, but he's back doing wicket-keeping duties. And uh, this could be critical. Devsic may not have been in very good form so far, but we know he's very destructive. There we go. Wide down leg. Devsic gave him the charge. Uh, we'll see the back foot. Mm, well, well, well. If the back foot cuts that uh, return crease, that's a no ball. So it might all be academic in terms of whether Mohamed Shazad got the, uh, the furniture disturbed at the business end. Well, of course, not easy for the umpires to spot that back foot no ball at all because their uh, attention's focused on perhaps the, the front foot. And there we go, the indication well spotted. And uh, let's see what happened here, though. I think he may have been out ha were it not a no ball. Where's the ball? Isn't uh, Mohamed Shazad's hands, gloves? It's in there somewhere. <laughs> so, well, fumbles all around and a free. He's saying, what now? Well, come on. You can't do this to me. I got two catches missed in two deliveries. Then I got a stumping, which was legitimate, we thought. And now you punish me with a no ball. Come on. Life is so rough. Here we go again. Well, I have to say, that looks fair enough to me. I think if Shahid Afridi sees that replay, he'll understand. Okay, fumble or no fumble, there's such back or not back. It's a free hit. And uh, this may just open the floodgates for Anton Devsic, who has been struggling. If he can uh, clobber this one for a big six, it might make a big difference to his uh, psychology at the crease. He'll come back for two, and that will be the 50. Oh, <laughs> and Shahid Afridi tried to kick the ball away. He missed it, and it's clobbered him straight on the shin. Well, we said before the game he was uh, full of the joys of spring after his uh, match off. I'm not sure he's full of the joys of spring now. Well, he was trying to be clever and run it onto the stumps. Ouch! On the left knee. That's the landing knee. And that's the last thing Shahid Afridi needs at, uh, if I may be allowed to say, his age. Oh, he's bowled! What an over that is from Afridi. Drama maximum. And was there a bit of a send-off there as well? Devsic doesn't seem too impressed. Afridi's the one with the smile on his face now, though. Oh, what an eventful over, at the end of which this happened. A regular leggy, big gap between bat and pad. That's how Devsic got out the last time as well.
And, uh, you know, easy, Shia the Freethi. Well, we know that uh, you almost had your man several times during that brief, that over. But finally, you do have Anton Devsic unable to contribute today. 14 for 15, 50 for three, the Leopards. Well, Shafikullah coming in at number five, and uh, the drama of this over could continue because we're about to get an extra ball from somewhere. Uh, just a second, everybody, hold on. Uh, perhaps the six balls are up. We think there was a one, uh, a dot, one, one, no ball, then a two and a wicket. So that completes six for us, including the no ball seven. And uh, yes, thank you. So finally, Shai of the Preethi says, <laughs> wow, what an over. He just wanted to continue, didn't he? He was quite happy to continue after getting the wicket finally in that over. So seven now gone, 50 for three. Yeah, that wasn't uh, dull at all, was it? And uh, just umpire, the, the umpire there just having a word with um, Shazad because we saw a Freedy get very animated in the uh, dismissal of uh, Devsic, and uh, Shazad was animated as well, as you'll see now. Yes, I'm not so sure he was animated so much with Devsic there. It was just the joy of the wicket. But, uh, well, Afridi was certainly animated at um, getting rid of Devsic. He was very pleased to see the back of the New Zealander. Well, both were animated, I think... Uh Try the free the little more vocal and being the bowler of course he just felt very hard done by a couple of catches uh, well one particularly uh, should have been taken the other was close and then the stumping which wasn't because of a no ball and finally the wicket so we're back with Sharafuddin so uh, who are you including your fantasy team myteam11.com is where you need to go create your own fantasy team test your skills win big real cash on offer don't delay Ooh, almost off his pad so this is a testing time for the leopards how on earth has that missed the leg stump goodness only knows well it was very wide but off uh, the pads it could have easily cannoned onto one of the stumps And Rema Chah says, enough of this going back and wondering what's going to happen. I'm just going to dance down the track and uh, push it away for a single get to the non-striker's end. Sharafuddin. And Shafikullah now about to face his uh, first ball. So I've said this before, but I'll say it again, Brian, worth repeating that uh, on this very pitch, just a short while ago, 467 runs in that uh, first match. Plenty of big hitting. Chris Gale, 10 sixes. Oh, again, finally some uh, aggressive intent there by Shafikullah. Well, we had 23 sixes in one innings alone, didn't we, by uh, the bulk legends. It was a, a remarkable match. But uh, these two sides, just a little bit more tension out there, I rather fancy. They, they know the importance of this game, both of them. You make a good point, because uh, both Balk Legends and uh, Kabul, of course, top of the pile. So maybe less tension there. Eight gone, we'll talk more about when we come back. 53 for three.
Shahid Afridi again. His second over, if it's anything like his first, we're in for um, in for a bit of fun here, I rather fancy. Yeah, but both sides a little tense, I rather fancy, purely and simply because they know the importance of this game. They're both desperate for a win. And uh, his batsman, Rehmat Khan, on that occasion, continue to go back to Shahid the Freedi and, and uh, are happy to cut. I just think that's a little dangerous because he fires it in uh, much faster than the average leggy and he doesn't spin that much. So every once in a while you get caught out being a little late on the ball, late on the cut and you get bowled. Once again, going back to that one. Oh, one at the run, shut up, could be out there. Big dive coming in, this is terrible. Rehmat Khan was never running, shut for the ran three quarters of the pitch, had to run back, put in the dive, he may be too late. Well, Ramat just turned his back on his partner at the non-striker's end. Shafikullah with the dive. Was it in time? I don't think it was. Well, in the end, he's probably run about a run and a quarter because he got about three quarters of the way down the pitch and had to go back again. But good work from Afridi. He's in the news again, isn't he? He really is at the heart of all the action at the moment. It's a wicket tossed away by the Nangahar Leopards. And they're in real strife now. A deep breath from Shafi Kula. Boy, is he frustrated. And why shouldn't he be? But the wicket is gone. And the Leopards now 54 for four. So thank you all for being here at the Sharjah Cricket Ground. I hope you're enjoying the action. Uh, lots of runs scored in the previous match and lots of wickets taken in this match so far. Hash comes in. Ben Cutting has a lot of faith in his abilities. Hashmatullah Shahidi. Uh, strike rate decent, but he's got a fair number of runs. This is his seventh match. He's got 165. He's been a regular contributor to uh, the Nangarar Leopards, who now are in more than a fair amount of trouble. I'm not saying deep trouble just yet because they've got some good strikers of the ball, including the skipper himself, Shai the Freedi, causing all sorts of problems. First ball, Shahidi late on it, gets an inside edge. So, if not with the bat, then uh, Afridi is really contributing heavily with the ball. There we go. Now it's the striker's call. It went so close to the non striker that I suppose you can. Excuse him for wondering should I take the run or not because the bowler could have easily stopped that or it could have ricocheted off to the non striker stumps. So you have to be a little generous, to my mind, uh, to Rehmat for waiting, hesitating. Yes, he turned his back on his partner though. A bit of a cardinal sin that, but top uh, marks to a free deep. He did well to get across there, pick it up, and uh, it was a bullet like return. No problems at all then for Shazad to whip the bales off. Well, the Freedy does have a great arm still. So another fantastic over by Shai the Freedy. Uh, wicket off the last one. Wicket in this over as well. well I beg your pardon. Wicket in this over. One for nine in two overs for a Freedy. 56 for four after nine. Sharafuddin to continue to Ramat Sharp. Let's have another look at that run out. 
Just watch how close the ball goes to Remat and uh, Remat Khan. And, and yeah, well, I just think that's what uh, was the problem there. He said, it's traveling right next to me. Is the, keep, uh, is the bowler going to get to it or not? What do I do? And then uh, Shafi Kula, of course, went on with the shot, with the stroke. And that's why he had a huge advantage over Rehmat. And, uh, of course, not easy getting back when you're three quarters of the way down. What we don't know, of course, what was the calling there? I'm not sure there was an awful lot. There's Nathan Remington, who made his uh, Nangaha debut last night. He's in the squad in place of the injured Andre Russell. Shahidi's been in terrific touch in this tournament so far, picking up a single there. 26 not out, 49 not out, 15, 23, 29 not out, 23. He's been a regular contributor, a very important contributor too, and he'll need to contribute in a big way, along with Ramat Shah here now. Right, cleverly bowled again by Sharfuddin. Probably spotted Rehmat uh, dancing down the track and bowled at his pads. Did not allow him to free his arms. So this is all very clever cricket. There's uh, Fletch. He hasn't got too many games for his team so far. That's uh, none. <laughs> but, well, we hope he gets one before, they, uh, before he goes home. And again, just, it looks like it's so difficult to find any kind of timing. Shahid is a much better striker than that. That was floated in, and he just couldn't catch that at all with the bat. Ten gone, halfway stage, and the Nangara Leopards are not doing too brightly this point of time. 60 for four. Didn't start off pretty well. Uh, Leopards up uh, 32 dot ball so far. Shai the Freed has done a wonderful job. Just cutting from where he left um, from the last game. A good effort from the experienced campaigner. Just need to move on. But the problem is uh, the four wickets they have lost. Not going to be easy from here on. Rama Shah is a class act. Hasn't got too many runs so far in the APL. Bowled really well uh, the other day, Rama Shah. Just see those figures, just the economy as well, under five. Getting a bit of turn there, Shaida Fridi. And with me in the com box, uh, once again, is uh, Afghanistan a fast bowler, Hamid Hassan. Hamid, uh, wonderful uh, bowling as far as the Panthers are concerned. Absolutely fantastic bowling uh, from uh, Paktia and uh, especially this guy, Shahida Fridi. He's outstanding tonight. I remember the last game when I had a chat with Mohammad Shahzad, he did mention that Shahid Afridi is such a big asset, experience, just warns that he should even uh, fire with the bat because uh, with the bat has been a bit rusty. Oh, good delivery. That was the Googly taking off the bales in a flash. Going to be interesting. Tell you what, if they take this wicket, Ningrahar is in a big trouble. Hashmat, man in form. Good work there from uh, Mohammad Shahzad. Now you got to see his uh, back leg. Was it in the air? First, uh, the no ball, absolutely okay. No issues with that. That's a legal delivery inside the crease there. Mohammad Shahzad, I thought, did a terrific job. Taking off the bales in a flash. Uh, watch his uh, back leg in the air. Oh, is it down in time? It's tough call. It's very close, look like it's out. Just by a millimeter, I feel, you know, because uh, the wheels were off the groove there. And at this point of time, if you see just that one frame, 
that will make the difference. I think uh, was he in? It's going to be a really touch and go, really a tough for the third empire as well. Again, brilliant work, Shazad. Looks to be in a bit of trouble there. Still a decision pending. And it's given out. So another wicket falling here. Afridi is striking. Good work by Afridi and Mohamed Shazad. Ashmat not looking happy. But very good work from Mohamed Shazad. Fast hands. He just out by a couple of centimeters. He looks like not happy. Hashmatullah gone for four after eight balls and 62 for five. So losing a very important wicket, Shahidi was a really uh, in great form, especially the Asia Cup, Shahidi. This was his wicket. Great delivery. Googly foxing him. Was playing for uh, the leg spinner, the turn. Just in the air there. Uh, just uh, brilliant work there from Omar Shahzad. Ben Cutting walks in, uh, the captain for uh, the Nungahar uh, Leopards. I think a lot will depend on him. Uh, still, they have batting left. This man can uh, get some runs. Ben Cutting has got experience behind him. Yeah, Ajay, as Shahzad mentioned of uh, Shahid Afridi, the big impact you can see. He got already two wickets for the Paktia team, and he's doing so well. And the only one team is Ningrahar, struggling a lot. If you see the first game, compared to this one, it's totally different. Struggling, and wicket is just collapsing, and pressure is building. It's a wonderful ball. Yeah, I think the key with Chai Fride is uh, the way he's mixed up his deliveries. You know, the, the variations he's shown, the googly as well. Bowls at a flatter trajectory. That's exactly what he's done over the years, Chai Fride. But bowling within the stumps, he's given really nothing away. Bowling his third over. Oh, that should have been fielded. Resulting in a single lap to win the... The over, 11 gone, it's 64 for 5. So Rehma Shah will have to play a big knock, battle the end. Uh, ben Cutting against the same team in the last match when they met each other. Got 71, batted really well. So he knows uh, the bowlers. Uh, Sharaf Houdin uh, coming on for his uh, third over, two overs, uh, seven runs. Hasn't got a wicket. But in tandem, both of them, Sharaf Houdin and Afridi, they have done a very good job. They really bowl well. Mentioned earlier, it's a very important game for both the sides. Nangahar uh, is losing the plot even uh, yesterday evening while chasing. That's exactly what happened against uh, Shahidi. Yeah, if you see here, its foot is just... Oh, yeah, it's out. So it's a good decision from the umpire in the end. But such a bad luck for Ashmat, the man in form. And uh, the team will be very disappointed about that dismissal. So this is the only one hope. The man who can hit long and far. Sharafuddin, very well ball again. Very clever. Read it. And don't giving any weight or to free his arm to hit the six or a boundary. Yeah, but coming back to uh, Hashmatullah Shahidi, uh, Ahmed, uh, he really batted well in the Asia Cup. Was uh, 
very consistent. Even I remember the test match that Afghanistan played uh, in India. The first test match, a big occasion for him. In the second innings, he remained unbeaten. So he's got the talent. He's uh, very mature as a player, as a batsman. Shahidi. Yeah, he is such a player. Very nice, very calm and cool. And uh, he can carry his innings, especially in ODI in test cricket. He just loved that format. And the T20, he was also like the, the, the he kind of a player who accelerates his innings in the end of last four or five overs. So he's taking slow and then building his innings and finishing with a very good style and very good strike rate as well. Boundary is really hard to come by. 30 yep, eight deliveries now. This is the last four overs hit. 12 overs gone, 69 for five. So, Fridi coming on uh, for his uh, last two overs. He's done a wonderful job for his captain, Mohammad Shahzad. Two for 14 for him. To see that economy under five. Uh, he's delivering once again uh, with the ball, Shahid the Fridi. And coming back to that uh, test match, we were just having a chat about that. Hamid, uh, how was the mood uh, way back in uh, Afghanistan? How were people reacting? Because. Uh, Obviously, for Afghanistan cricket uh, team as a whole, a big occasion. You know, you always want to be in wides, play that test match. It's a different feeling. You might have played one day T20. But uh, playing a test match for the very first time as a country, as a nation, it's always great. And especially against a team like India as well. Yeah, Rajay, of course, it's a big uh, occasion for the country, for the entire nation. Like, the moment I was waited for many years, and I was hoping and uh, expecting to be part of that test match, but unfortunately got injured and couldn't play that game. But for the rest of the country, for the players, and uh, for uh, oh, it's a run out chance? No. So for the country and for the team, especially to Afghanistan Cricket Board, such a wonderful achievement to play against team number one in test ranking, like India. Against them, it's a big achievement. And uh, we played a good game. Uh, we lost it, but the thing is, that's a big, huge from Ben Cutting. Maximum Fox Pagiza. Finally, after 41 balls, something to cheer for Ning Rahad Leopards. What a strike here from Ben Cutting. Fox Maximum knew exactly what he was doing, reading the length in the slot for him. Afridi has been very economical, but Ben Cutting having other ideas. On the rooftop there, not very happy, Afridi. But mention that against the same team, uh, he got 71. Ben Cutting so knows this attack, knows this bowling. He's a very handy customer with the bat as well. Always gives his all. By this time, they should know, like everyone, they're almost playing second game against each other. And they should know the condition and they should know the situation. And... Uh, there, oh, that's a beautiful cut from Ramat Shah. Once again, another boundary maximum for Saluriza. 13 overs gone, it's 83 for 5. So 83 for five, the last over from Afridi, a touch expensive. Last ball previous over, very nicely played by Rehmer Shah, just waiting for that one. Playing it very late, that was the key in that shot. Just eluding the fielder at short third man and racing to the fence. So suddenly, uh, just opening up, they do realize here, the Leopards, not too many overs left. 
We still have uh, a few wickets left. And this pair, I think, is going to be a very important one, Hamid, in context of uh, this innings. Mentioned about uh, that knock, 71, his best so far. Against the same opponent, 71 of just 39 the other day. After that, hasn't got too many runs when cutting. That's in the air. And great timing. Great execution from Ben Cutting. Fog maximum once again. Spakiza. The power, the speed of bat from Ben Cutting. Outstanding once again. A big massive six. Yes, that's all we know about him. He can hit far away. And another maximum for Ben Cutting. That's a good ball. Read the batsman. And uh, Sharafuddin is doing so well. He give only 3.3 overs the ball, 21 runs. Such a clean striker, uh, Ben Cutting. Tall man uh, makes uh, use of his uh, reach, uh, Ben Cutting. And just seeing that six once again, Hamid, uh, you see, not coming down the track, just inside the crease. Getting the elevation, swing of the bat, beautifully done by him. It's fantastic, like just standing in the liver. He's tall, his reach is too far, and ball like this in this kind of area, he can hit it easy. So these two pair are very important for Ningrahar Leopards to take the team around 150 or 150 plus. Still, they got six overs remaining. They need another two, three overs to build the score and put us some good target for the bowlers yeah you're right because you know 140 150 i still feel i still reckon that's going to be a good score why I say that is this the bowling that uh nangahar have sandeep lamichane mujibur rahman zahir khan rahman shah four quality spinners in the ranks that's played well this rocking back will settle for one end of the 14th over it's 94 for five At one stage, Nangahar was 62 for 5, but after that, this partnership has blossomed. Yes, because of this man, Ben Cutting, outstanding, 71 last innings of just 39 balls against same team, Paktia. You can see some big shots, massive. And he's now to take the charge. So eyes on Ben Cutting, Ziao Rahman. It's a wide ball. Baller, uh, if you're bowling to Ben Cutting, uh, the way he's in form, so you have to be worried, especially like a bowler of Ziaur Rahman, a new to cricket, a new to this Afghanistan Premier League, so he'll be worried. Like if I bowl in a line in length, he can hit it easy. Rais Ahmadzai, ex Afghanistan, captain, fielding coach, and chief selector. Oh, that's high up in the air. That should be taken. And that's going to be a big wicket. Afridi won't miss it. Big wicket here for Sharifi. This man was looking up good. Ben Cutting was playing those big shots, uh, but he's got to depart now. Important wicket coming here for the Panthers at this stage. Once again, Sharifi strike for the team. He got his third wicket. An outstanding bowling from him, and finally, a brilliant, easy catch from Shahid Afridi. No mistake, very easy, simple catch in the end. And that's a wicket they wanted because uh, this partnership was building, it was looking good. Ben Cutting was looking up, threatening with the bat as well, but he's got to walk back for 21 of 12, it's 95 for 6.
So Ben Kadenga walks back to the pavilion in walks uh, Naveen. He'll be at the non striker's end. Rema Shah will be on strike. It's going to be important now for Rema Shah to bat till the end. Naveen Ulak, uh, very decent uh, bowler. Can bat, but uh, hasn't got too many runs so far in his uh, T20 career. Probably just bats uh, way down. You feel that uh, probably Ben Cutting should have uh, batted for another three or four overs. Uh, that would have been very handy here. But trying that big one. He was looking so good. Uh, the big shots were coming from his blade. Yeah, of course, Ajay. If you see, the tail has already started. Uh, because you know your team uh, don't have any batsmen after Ramat Shah, so only like Naveen, he's also a bowler. I think to, for Ben Cutting, he should go for another three to four, three overs at least. After 17 overs, he can take a charge and he can hit it. But uh, I have to say, well ball to Ziaur Rahman. He bowled really well, and it's almost tail begin for uh, Ningrahar Lipitz, and they're struggling. The only one man. Right now, Rahmat Shah, if he's in the crease, maybe they can put some runs. Otherwise, uh, there is a no chance of possibility to get runs around 150 or 140 plus. Well, Hamid, as far as Sharif is concerned, a young lad, uh, but these are the best bowling figures for him in his uh, T20 career. Three for 23 so far. He's taken three very important wickets, uh, really bowled well up front with the new ball as well. He's doing a good job for his captain. I think at this stage, uh, Mohamed Shazaz should be a very happy man. And just seeing what happened in the last game, that high-scoring game, they have picked up some uh, valuable wickets here. The Pakhtia Panthers. Six wickets uh, in all in his uh, T20 career. Still early days for him. I have to say, uh, well done to Daulat Ahmad Zai. He was the guy he found him and uh, pushed him to play a cricket and uh, he, he was uh, with emergence and under 19 it's three wickets first one Najibullah went cross second one a beautiful slower one and the uh, leg before the third one a big one of Ben cutting well ball once again youngster uh, so I was talking about Sharifi he's a bowler uh, that Daulat Ahmad Zai found him and then he pushed him to play a cricket. So he, he did really well in emergence. Recently he played a ODI and now he's uh, delivering his skills and ability. Uh, such a good talent. Once again, mixing his pace, he's really done well. Very impressive bowling from Sharifi. 15 gone is 98 for 6. It's not a great looking card, is it, if you're uh, a Nangahar Leopards supporter? Four players in double figures, three of those getting past 20 but not going on with the job. Ramat Shah involved in that uh, horrible mix up with uh, Shafikullah that saw the, the latter run out. He's a key man now in the last five overs of this innings. Yusuf Zazai, two overs for him so far. Ramat on strike. Well, that's got to be a wide, even though Ramat was using his feet to come down the pitch. Alistair Campbell alongside me. Alistair, we've seen some um, low scores defended in this uh, tournament. What can Nangaha look to defend here? They've got a great spin attack, remember, and that includes um, the newcomer Sandeep Lamichain of uh, Nepal. So they might think that anything's possible. It's got to be another wide. Yeah, I think they've got the best bowling attack in the tournament. Nanga Halepa is just the batting that's been a bit woeful on occasion. In fact, a lot of the time. And uh, they've uh, had to rely on rescuing acts to uh, get them out of trouble. 
Ben Cutting on occasion, Ramat Shah on occasion. So uh, I think if they get to sort of 140, maybe 150, that uh, they'll back themselves with that spin attack. Having said that, it's a very good batting wicket. But we have seen just uh, on occasion here with the Freedy, the ball turning a little bit. So I think there is that on offer. And uh, I suppose what they have to do with those is get to that 140, 150. I think if they collapse here and get 120, 130, I wouldn't give them much price. Yesterday on that pitch, maybe. On this pitch, no. I just think uh, they need a, a wee bit more than that. It's going to be a tough ask. Ramachar can uh, have to really dig deep. He's 28 or 30, and he'll have to find some acceleration at the end. And a partner as well. Interesting question for you, given you were out in the middle before play today and had a look at the surface. Obviously, in that first match, we saw what um, 244 plays 223. Was the pitch really a 244 versus 223, or was it simply that the bowling was was pretty woeful? And um, if you like, the bowling's been much better in um, in this innings. Just have a think about that while we watch this uh, next delivery from Yusuf Zazai. No, not a, not uh, any stretch of the imagination that I think it would be uh, yeah 240 plays 220. But I did think. It was around about that 200 mark, uh, 190, 200. We saw that in the first game yesterday as well, 195. Ryan Tenderscarter played uh, brilliantly. So I thought it would uh, be in that region. And if you did really bat well, maybe get over 200. But never <laughs> did I expect uh, those two scores and a you know, combination of uh, indifferent bowling and uh, a really good batting wicket, really. Now look for two here. Naveen Ulhaq wanted it, Ramat didn't. I was talking to some officials from um, the Afghanistan Cricket Board between matches, and they were saying to me that they might look at um, a pitch just to the left of this one for uh, a couple of matches later on this week. Just where about a shade of Freedy is there, or, or maybe just actually to uh, the left of the pitch that we're using, possibly. Maybe just to give these two pitches a bit of a breather before um, we get into the business end of the tournament on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, I think television's a concern as well. Got to make sure that uh, it's all uh, lined up. So uh, it's a decent size square. There's uh, plenty of uh, pitches you could use, but when it comes to televised affairs, I think there's only three or four max that uh, you can use. So, uh, yeah, maybe one to the left of this, or right, depends where you're sitting on the ground. But other than that, I don't think uh, there's uh, any other ones they can really turn to. Having said that, everyone's used the word tired and low. They're all, all cliches. You've just seen what's, uh, you know, what's happened here today. And I think the curator here has done a tremendous job. And if he, you know, gets some time, we've got a day off tomorrow just to prepare. I think the pitches will be fine, to be honest. Into the over, 16 bold, 105 for six. Four overs to go. Let's go down to uh, Hamid Hassan. I think he's got an update on the injury to uh, Usman Ghani from a little earlier. Salam, Granu Minawalo. The Afghanistan Tool Khalkata, the Zeri News Dadeche, Usman Ghani, Mashallah Sihat Yabde, Hospital Keda, Spatal Kiwata, Tisuna Kridi, Suna Chikapichi Shividi, Tool Cleardi, Inshallah Dirzer Babirta, Palilo Batarashi. Uh, that's a good news for Usman Ghani. Uh, his all results is clear, and he's uh, healthy, and uh, he will be back soon for his team, and uh, he'll be back soon for the ground. Back to commentary box. Great stuff, Hamid. That's very good news indeed. It was a, a sickening collision between himself and his captain, Mohammed Nabi. 
in the field for uh, the Bulk Legends. Let's have a look at uh, what happened. Nabi going one way, Usman Ghani going the other, and bang. You don't want to collide with Mohamed Nabi, let me tell you that. And Usman Ghani, no doubt he had a headache. And a little bit more besides, I'm sure. So in rugby parlance, he's passed the concussion test and uh, will be back ready for action. So uh, that's really good news. It's not so good news for the Nangaha Leopards because they're stalling here at the moment, stagnating, not able to really take advantage of these last few overs. Ramat Shah has played a lone hand, but he hasn't been able to really free the arms or, or play with any freedom because he's been uh, losing partners at the other end. And he's 31 of 35 deliveries. Eight and over from here and then gets him to 134. Ten and over, 141. I think uh, in that region is somewhere they have to try and be if they're going to give themselves any chance. All runs gratefully accepted, no matter how they come. Such a big game, isn't it? And people... Uh, respond to pressures differently Paktia Panthers know if they win it they go to eight points and they guaranteed a place in the semi-finals they can uh, breathe a little easier where the Nangaha Leopards they know that if they lose this game they're under real pressure and they haven't got uh, much time to recover because they've only got one game left so if they lose here yeah, the maximum they can get to is six points but the Kandahar Knights they'll uh, really sniff something in the air and believe that they can get back in the competition 24 balls since the last boundary that tells the story really that's what it's all about the leopards playing the penultimate match of the uh, regular season it's a good short ball and a very good spell indeed by Sharifi 17 gone 109 for six The other issue is uh, the net run rate. The Nangahar Leopards are minus 0.527. Kandahar Knights have got a significantly better run rate. So if it does come to equal points between those two to who qualifies, then uh, run rate is going to play a big role. And at the moment, they've got a lot of catching up to do, Kandahar Knights. But they'll believe that uh, if they just have to win another couple of games, their net run rate might just put them in the pound seats when it comes to that semi-final spot. What a bowler this man has been in the tournament thus far. Look at that, two overs for four. Fantastic stuff. Suru Adana is going to go round the wicket from the pavilion end, bowling to Naveen ul -Hak. And this is uh, what we've seen from uh, Udana for uh, most of the tournament. Generally, he started off over the wicket, trying to swing the ball for the first over or two, and then later on in the innings, he's come round the wicket, trying to cramp the batsman for room. He's been such an effective bowler, hasn't he, Alistair? And amazing to think that, of course, he missed the first game. Amazing in the sense that uh, they got the balance of the side wrong in that first game, did uh, Paktia. That's why they lost to uh, Kabul. Just had one front-line seamer, if memory serves me correct. But since Udan has come into the side, from a bowling perspective, they really have looked uh, a different kettle of fish entirely. I think he's had a simple game plan, a clear game plan, and he's executed the best out of anybody. And that has been an excellent slower ball that he's used uh, to good effect and exactly when it's been required. But the big thing for me is that Yorker, he's used it up front and at the back end of the innings. And uh, I just think he's been fantastic. And those uh, figures are a testament to that fact. Four for 38, he was a little expensive in the game against Bulk, but managed to pick up four wickets. But the rest of the games have been absolutely outstanding. And bowls at uh, the crucial uh, stages of every game, right at the front and right at the back end when everyone's on the attack.
Well, that looked like a decent shout to me. Maybe, just maybe, the batsman got outside the line of off stump. I think that's what saved him. Just walks across the stumps, and uh, this will give us a better indication. Oh, I tell you what, that's so close. Did it hit him on uh, off stump? He was on the move. Did he get it just outside the line? It was mighty close. Benefit of the doubt. And uh, there wasn't a lot of doubt. I'll tell you what, it was a matter of millimeters, but going in the favor of the batsman on that occasion. Shazad directing the traffic as captain. He was telling me uh, just off microphone before the match started that he's not really enjoying that aspect of captaincy at all. He says he's finding it uh, pretty mentally tiring out on the ground, not just having to think about his own performance, but the performance of his 10 teammates and where the uh, where the fielders are, the bowling changes. I think he's very grateful to have players like Udana with bags of experience and Afridi, of course, in the side too. Over cover. And that's Sharifi out at a very wide third man. Just a single. And only two off the over, four balls bowled. So they're really finding it tough here at the back end. Nangaha Leopards. Good effort in the outfield, just keeping it down to one. And he's happy with that. Isuru Adana, cool customer, really is doing a terrific job. Yeah, they'll uh, be. Uh, a few nerves in that camp, let me tell you. But, uh, it's not all positive, those faces. That's slashed away. And fine leg, I should say, third man is up in the circle. A rare delivery off uh, track from Usuru Udana. And uh, he's able to get a healthy outside edge, is Naveen ul -Huk, and races away for four. Width was the key here. He had uh, long on and long off in position. But he had third man up in the circle. So it's one of those situations where, as long as Naveen ul -Hak got some bat on the ball, he was going to get value, given that width that Udana provided him with. Now he goes over cover. They should come back for two. Shut off a din out there on the cover boundary. Two runs for Naveen, he's on to 11, 117 for six. Two overs left, 12 balls. What can Nangaha do? Can they get up to that 140 that Alistair Campbell's been talking about? Yusuf Zazai from the Sharjah club end, the penultimate over. It's off somewhere near the bottom of the bat. Afridi's there, and Afridi takes the catch. Ramachar goes, and that's another hammer blow right in the guts of Nangaha Leopards. Yeah, the last recognised batsman, he needed to bat through to the end, and it's not going to happen right at the toe end, it was a full toss, just gave himself too much room, and all he could do was spoon it up in the air, Shade Afridi making some good ground, the elder statesman, and he's not going to drop those. So uh, they get another one, do the, the Paktia Panthers, and Nanga are leopards, well, their struggles continue. Robert Shah gone for 32, 117 for seven now.
Mujib in at uh, number nine. The batsman crossed while that ball was in the air. So uh, Naveen Al Haq will be on strike. A direct hit would have seen uh, Mujibu Rahman on his way back to the pavilion. Sami Shinwari was at short fine leg. This is why uh, Mujib is here. In fact, uh, before that, this is the, uh, the attempted run out from uh, Shinwari. And as you can see, that would have been out and the ball struck the stumps. Right, Mujib is an entertaining batsman. He tries to play all the shots in the book. Don't be surprised if you see him trying to play the reverse sweep. He tries to move across his stumps. He has uh, got a lot of things going through his mind as to where he wants to score. Oh, he flats that bun away. Oh, it's a terrific strike. It really is. Just held back in his crease. It was short. And it came right out the middle of the bat. Excellent strike. Well... The over started with that uh, dismissal of Ramat Shah, where the ball came right off the toe. That came right out of the middle. You can see the red spots on uh, Mujibur Rahman's bat. And uh, that was roughly around the area that that ball found. Oh, what a tremendous effort at backward point. I think that's Cameron Delport flying away to his left. That would have been four, so uh, in one sense you can say Delport saved uh, three runs, but uh, tremendous effort from him. Yeah, I think you're right. He saved the boundary big time. It was going very quickly. Uh, yes, it goes down technically as a chance, but terrific effort just to get there and parry it. Oh, he's got to get back. He didn't know where it was. He was beaten all ends up was Naveen ul -Huck and then decided to take a trot down the wicket and was very nearly run out. Directed, I reckon. Would have seen him short of his ground. Yes, it's an interesting decision to run when you don't know where the ball is. And that's exactly what uh, Naveen did there. And yes, he was gone for all money if uh, Mohamed Shazad had hit the stumps. Well, is that a wide? No. End of the over, one to come, 123 for seven. Fans who've turned up here at the Sharjah Cricket Stadium this evening, really enjoying themselves in this Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League action. The last over to be bowled by Isuru Adana. Now, he doesn't usually go around the park, so this is going to be a very tough task indeed for Nangahar to get anything remotely resembling a big over in. Looks like uh, Udana is going to go back over the wicket for this last over. Mujib is the man on strike. Third man is up in the circle and also very, very fine. A slower ball. <laughs> it's so well bowled, it really is. But uh, that's his method of attack. That uh, fine, I should say the third man up in the circle, fine, and then a backward point right on the boundary, an extra cover on the boundary and a mid off. So the target is outside that off stump. Trying to move across the stumps there, Mujib. Not able to make uh, good contact, not able to shovel it away on the leg side. One is all they'll get. Now, we saw the Nangahar tail last night, Alistair, against um, Saeed uh, Shazad. Really struggle with his slower balls. Is it a case for these two batsmen now of simply playing every ball from Udana as if it's going to be a slower ball? And then if there uh, is a 
a full pace delivery, then so be it. But simply playing him as though he's going to bowl that slower ball, setting yourself for that. Yeah, it's not a bad method, that. I think you've got to set yourself uh, back in your stumps because you know that if it is a quicker one, it's trying to, or it's going to try and be the Yorker. He's going to aim for the Yorker. So you want to be back there to try and give yourself as much uh, chance as possible to get some willow underneath it, to be able to leverage it. And then if it is a slow ball, I think it's always better to be uh, hanging back and you're able to make a better connection from then. When you're moving forward, you tend to be overbalancing a little bit and it's tougher to make a good contact with a slower ball. Out. Well, interesting idea from Naveen ul -Hak with third man up in the circle. He was trying to ramp the ball, even though it was very full in length outside the off stump over that fielder, but all, the, all he did in the end was just ramp it straight into uh, Shazad's hands. Yeah, <laughs> he would have thought for a while that, hold on, I've actually done this perfectly, but unluckily for him, he didn't get enough angle on it, didn't get it to evade the keeper and a simple catch really from Mohamed Shazad. And the Suru Adana, well, he does what he does best. He really is finishing the sinnings off superbly well. The consummate professional, Naveen ul -Haq. he'll have his work cut out with ball in hand, but for now he's gone for 13, 126 for eight. Just checking the front foot to ensure that uh, Naveen ul -Haq had something, uh, rather, uh, Suru Adana had something behind the line, and he did. And so uh, that is a wicket for Udana. 126 for eight, and uh, Sandeep Lamichan, the uh, Nepalese leg spinner, will make his way out to uh, the middle now for his first innings in this Gulbaha Afghanistan Premier League. It's his debut, of course, playing for Nepal in an ICC World 2020 qualifier, which explains his uh, late arrival. Another look at the wicket. Yeah, it doesn't come off the face, comes off the top edge. That's the problem. If he had uh, got it to come off the face, would have got it to go a lot squarer. But Asuru Adana, well, you're the one who should be uh, applauded by the rest of your team the way you bowled in this tournament. Another wicket, another fine over to close things out. Still two, ball, two balls remaining, though. Three runs only of this last over. They're going to run. And I'll tell you what, he's hit the stumps. And <laughs> has he made his ground or is he short? They're going to go upstairs. This is going to be mighty close. Well, they ran just to try and get Mujib back on strike, but I think he's been short of his ground. Yes, he's out. What a terrific last over is from Udana. Just three runs from it. A couple of wickets too now. Good work as well from Mohamed Shazad and Nangaha. They're just falling in a heap here. With one ball remaining, they're now nine down. 126 for nine, with Mujibur Rahman run out for seven. Suru Adana getting rid of uh, Naveen ul -Hak earlier in this over, and that continues his excellent run in this tournament. Look at that, he's got at least one wicket in every match that he's played. 11 wickets so far. And he really has been one of these standout players of this Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League. Last ball then. 
and Zahir Khan on strike. Out. So in the end, three wickets in three balls. One of them was a run out. Afridi pouching the catch at extra cover. So two wickets now for Udana and Nangaha bowled out from the last ball of their innings, all out for 126. What a disastrous end to their 20 overs, and it means that uh, Paktia require just 127 for victory. Yeah, a disastrous end, really, to a far from perfect uh, batting display. Giving himself room, Zahir Khan trying to muscle it over the cover area, but Shai Afridi had uh, other thoughts and plucks it out of the air. Is Suru Adana, who else, to finish things up? That, uh, I think we played uh, probably the best cricket over the three weeks. Um, and I really did well in the league phase, beating uh, them twice. But this is going to be another day. It's a, a big game, of course. Kabul as well. They have done pretty well. They started off nicely against the Pakhtia Panthers, uh, winning by three wickets, of course. Then they lost against Balk. They also lost the other league game against uh, Balk by 21 runs. But uh, remember, the semi-final yesterday was a big win for them. And they won by 90 runs. Uh, Brian was uh, once again down and he had a chat. Delighted to say that we've been joined by Kabul's Wanan's Laurie Evans. Laurie, big game. You played in a big game in September in the UK and came off second best for Sussex there in the final. What's going to be different tonight? Well, I've got Parney in the same team this time. So, uh, you know, he obviously won for Worcester that day. Um, the finals are always brilliant. Um, it's, it's all about who handles the pressure the best and... Um, I like to think I've got a good record in finals, um, so hopefully I'll just continue that and uh, you know, and try and lead by example in that dressing room. Where's the game going to be won and lost tonight? Obviously, you've got Rashid Khan, you've got Wayne Parnell, big players for big matches, but they've got Chris Gale and a host of players who've performed really well in this tournament. Yeah, I think the pressure's probably all on them and um, sometimes in big pressure games, the, the sort of the underdogs are you know, a, a sort of the de more dangerous team. So hopefully we can, you know, look, we've been, we've got some quality players in our dressing room and it's just, like I said, who handles the pressure the best on the day and delivers their skills, um, you know, to the highest, to the highest level. How much confidence can you take out of that crushing semi-final win last night going into tonight? Is it an advantage to be playing back to You know, time will tell, but, you know, I think everyone in that dressing room is pretty excited to be playing a final. Laurie, thanks very much for joining us. Best of luck tonight. Cheers, thanks. Very nicely said by Laurie Evans that it's going to be a pressure game. Whoever handles the pressure well uh, would be uh, doing well in this game. Hasratullah Zazai, Rashid Khan, the big names in the ranks, of course, having a chance with the, the coach as well he's trying uh, just uh, warming up uh, before the game those uh, motions up uh, just before the game just uh, a bit loser as well and it's gonna be interesting how the surface is here for the final because we had some low scoring games or high scoring ones as well but uh, Hamid and uh, Brian were out there for the pitch report we're out right in the middle here at Sharjah Cricket Stadium where we've had 22 previous over the course of 16 days. We've been on two pitches and we're on the middle of the two pitches for the final. I've got Hamid Hassan with me, the Afghanistan fast bowler. Hamid, this is the surface then that we're going to have the 40 overs on today. What are your impressions of it? Oh, the wicket is very good for batting. If you see last games, uh, they played very well. And uh, I don't see any much changes uh, because there's a cracks. It's hard surface. And it's just the grass is there just holding uh, the pitch. So I think uh, it's not going to any big changes. Maybe in 40 hours will be good for both sides. And it's a final pressure. As a captain, if you were to win the toss, which would you prefer to do? Would you like to bat first and set a target or would you like to chase? Of course, if I was a captain, I have to bat first. Uh, because if you see last two games in semifinals, uh, they lost uh, by chasing. The pressure game is there, big final, everybody wants to win the game and uh, I have to say betting will be uh, first will be uh, good for the team to put a good total on, t uh, on board and then we'll see the next team what we'll do for chasing. 
So that's our view from out here. It's a good surface, and if the captain winning the toss uh, has a decision to make, we think he should bat first. Yes, and this man, he will be ready to go. The universe boss, he's come back into form. They have come some decent bowlers as well. Aftab Alam, he's done well. Mohamed Nabi, of course, a very good handy all-rounder for them. They have some seasoned campaigners. And what happened at the toss? Of course, Brian was out there with both the captains. We're all set for the final of the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League, powered by Fog. We've got the two captains out here, Rashid Khan of uh, Kabul Zwanan and Mohamed Nabi of Bulk Legends. We've got the match referee as well, David Dukes, who's got the coin, gentlemen. Mohamed Nabi's got the coin. Heads is the call. And it's come down ahead. Rashid, what are you going to do? Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim First of all, we'd like to have a, a bet first. Looks to me a good wicket to, uh, to bet on and uh, to put some total uh, final game, big match. So always good to have some total on the board. You batted first in the semi-final last night and that obviously worked for you. Is, is that what it's all about, putting runs on the board and pressure in a final? Yeah, exactly. I think uh, uh, in a big game, it's always crucial to put uh, runs on the board, and it's quite quite tough to share that. You know, it's always remain in the in the in the history as well. But we just need to focus on playing good cricket. Uh, we were mentally ready for either bowling or batting, but that's what we had planned to to bat on. So looking forward to get a good total on the board and try to defend that. What about changes in your uh, starting lineup? Is it the same side as last night, or have you made any alterations? Yeah, we have one change. Uh, Fitratullah is not playing, and instead of the that Tariq Nasir to Dakhil is back in the team. Thanks very much, Rashid. Good luck this evening. Nabi? <laughs> Nabi, what would you have done if you would uh, won the toss? Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yes, if you look the, to the pitch, it's uh, uh, quite a betting track as well. And also wanted to, uh, to bet first as well. But there is uh, unfortunately toss loss and uh, uh, hope, hopefully we will uh, restrict them in the low, lowest total. Yeah? Well, you beat them in the two group games and you beat them batting second and you beat them batting first. So you must have a lot of confidence. Yeah, we, 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 we quite uh, uh, practice for the chasing and uh, for batting first or batting second. We have all uh, confidence on that. Uh, hopefully we'll uh, chase easily. Any changes from your side that uh, won a couple of nights ago? No, we have same side today. Nabi, thank you very much indeed for your time and good luck this evening. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, there you have it, out here in the middle, Rashid Khan of Kabul Zwanan has won the toss and he's opted to bat first. So, Rashid Khan, he wants to get runs on the board, that's going to be important, a big game, of course, the lineup for them, they're playing 11, uh, Musa still out there, Wayne Parnell, Rashid Khan, they have a very strong outfit, of course, with me in the com box, I've got uh, Dougie Brown, former cricketer and UAE national coach as well. Uh, Dougie looks to be a good lineup this one, isn't it? It is, absolute power all round. Both teams have a lot of power, bat very, very deep. I was very interested to see Laurie Evans say the team that handles the pressure most will, will be the ones who, who come out on top. And, and again, interesting to see that the team winning the toss has chosen to bat first and try and get some kind of um, scoreboard pressure on the board. In finals, we know how important that is. Yeah, mentioning about bulk legends, well, uh, Chris Gale, Rasuli, they did really well in the semi final. Munro, Tendas, Karte, Gopara, they have really done well in the middle order. They bat deep. Omar Nabi has played some cameos. Gulbadi Naib as well, a very decent all rounder. Ikram Mali, Kill, of course, a wicket keeper for them. Ashraf, Emma, then Aftab Alam. So it looks to be a very good side. And of course, uh, in the league phase, they won both the games against the Kabul side. So that's going to be, of course, uh, a different thing now because that's a past story. It's a new game, uh, a new. Uh, Pressure as well being the final, so it's not going to be easy. But the people out here waiting in eagerness. What occasion here, Dougie? It is. I mean, they may not be packing the stands in here, but I'm no doubt there are millions of people back in Afghanistan watching this bated breath. You know, two powerhouses of, of Afghanistan cricket, if you like, and some of the best batsmen on, on display over the course of the, the whole tournament. Uh, we're expecting an absolute belter of an occasion here tonight. And, you know, we, we all know what finals sometimes end up being, but I think with the, the the type of players on display, we can only expect to be an absolute brilliant night. You know, you have uh, coached so many sides, of course, uh, UAE national coach as well. Uh, Laurie Evans was with you in the county circuit. So, you know, as a coach, uh, what would you say to your 
boys you know just before the game or the team meetings uh, what would be your uh, thought be as far as the big game is concerned Dougie? well i think you, you've got to take into account what's happened previously uh, i spoke to heath streak uh, one of the coaches down there tonight and he was saying that you know they've spoken a lot about the lengths that they bowl but ultimately it's about going out there and expressing themselves and enjoying themselves clearly both teams are playing good cricket they've got to final other teams have not got to the final so we know there are very good players in this side who are performing really well in a final it takes your big players to have a big day uh, that's exactly what all the coaches and all the players will be looking for um, but you know i think it's going about going out there expressing yourself but just making sure the occasion doesn't get too much to you exactly what laurie evans said take control of the pressure and go and have a good day and what an entry out there because uh, absolutely some big stars mega stars uh, people uh, really uh, waiting in eagerness uh, both the openers walking out uh, along with of course uh, the uh, ball side as well uh, Mohammad Nabi knows uh, they have to bowl well initially they have to pick up wickets Hazratullah Zazai what a name he's made for himself with those six sixes in one over but a hundred as well in the league phase uh, really he's made a big statement for himself he has he looks a very dangerous player and, and I think you know these book legends need to be on the toes because you know that if, if they get it wrong to him the dimensions of this this ground here Sharjah and, and the flat nature of the pitch will probably play into his hands but let's not forget about the guy at the other end Luke Ronke um, he very rarely goes through a tournament having not made a major impact he's not really done that in this tournament to, to this point he's, he's made good contributions but he's not for me made match winning contributions and in a final like this with the experience that the man in the screen has you'd be looking to him to use his experience and certainly to usher the younger player through and take some of the pressure that may be on him off his shoulders yeah, mentioning with Luke Ronke, he hasn't got big runs. He's got uh, 150, of course, uh, his highest being what, that 50. But Hazrat as I just mentioned about him, what a player he is. Absolutely class, you know, uh, the way he strikes it. He's a very clean uh, hitter. Just see that strike rate, phenomenal in uh, any uh, format. And, uh, of course, in the APL, 198 for him so far. Yeah, I was interested in watching the way that he batted. He went about his innings. He's, he's very much a hitter, um, looking to, to sort of clear his legs and hit the ball straight, clear his front leg. He's looking to drag the ball straight. And it'll be interesting to see um, how these bulk legends go about trying to defend that. Um, Hadra Tula is looking for, for the bowler to bowl straight and he's looking to, to hit the ball off the line of the stumps. I'll be interested to see if they actually try and change their angles or change the lengths to him just to make it that slightly, uh, slightly more difficult for him. All in redness here, Emma Shah Pakteen, of course, uh, the um, Square Leg Empire from Afghanistan, his uh, partner Anil Chaudhary from India, very experienced in the ICC panel as well. All in redness out here, Mohammad Nabi uh, going to uh, start off the proceedings. He's done that very frequently for the bulk legends. So all settled. He's generally getting to his uh, partner as well. Interesting field set here. He's got a uh, ring of fielders on the yaw for Man at Square Leg. Finally, gets inside the circle. So the first ball of the final. Getting a bit of drift as well with the new ball. Gets that curve very nicely, Mohamed Nabi. Yeah, you actually just play him as a little outswing bowler. He's not trying to spin it with a new ball. And, and his record is incredible. Considering he bowls so many overs in the power play, how often he manages to keep his economic rate intact. It's not an easy art, Dougie, because uh, bowling with a new ball, you've got to be very accurate with the uh, glaze uh, on the ball, the shine on the ball. And uh, his accuracy has been absolutely brilliant. Uh, he's got that confidence, you know. He's, uh, the way he bowls with a new ball is what he's done so far. 4 for 12 against Nangaha. That was a very good spell. He's uh, picked up a few wickets. But he's been economical more than picking up wickets. He's done really well with the new ball to start with. Yeah, he very rarely goes through, goes through a game without making an impact, either with ball or with bat. And um, we've seen that over the course of this tournament. His, his strike rate as a batsman is is over 200. You know, he's very economical with his bowling and, and very difficult. We've seen the majority of runs being scored here are coming against the new ball. You know, anybody that's dished up width or or any excess length have just been deposited. For the left-hander, he had a slip in place. He's off the mark as well. So both the openers off the mark with those uh, singles. Exactly what you want to do in a big game, uh, just relieve a bit of pressure, get those first runs as an opening batsman. Uh, you know, being an opening batsman, I always was very eager to get those first runs under my belt. Yeah, it's very important just to feel bat and ball. And maybe a little bit of cat and mouse here for the first over. Just looking to try and ease into the game, if you like, and, and take the pressure off the dressing room. Because there will be pressure in the dressing room, no, as, no matter how much Laurie Evans has talked about, you know, dealing with the pressure. There will be pressure on both teams, and it's important that both get off to a very good start. Oh, that's put away. That's a biggie to start with. Fuck maximum. Spagiza. What a strike there. 
just down the pad line, picks up the length. What a strike from Luke Ronke. Yeah, beautiful shot there from Luke Ronke. Mohamed Nabi looking to bowl straight as he can and just getting it too straight in that occasion. The ball not swinging. These white balls only really swing in shape for a, a very short uh, period of time. And that one just on his pads and, and Luke Ronke, we know he's a very powerful striker, but when he's got the line he's looking for, this boundary here in Sharjah Stadium is, is never going to be big enough for him. This is the same surface where the first semi-final was played and of course, uh, Bulk Rangers batting first in that game, scored 235 for 5. It was a big score, such a good surface to bat on. If you get your eyes in. Just yes, yes. playing in the gap, will be runs here, bisecting that uh, gap between uh, point and shot third man. That's good running as well, ending uh, with two runs. Uh, the first over gone, 10 without loss. So 10 runs and a 6 coming off the first boundary from Mohamed Nabi. And opening at the other end. There's a very dynamic player, Gilbert and Nabe. He's done really well in this tournament. He's always seems to find a way to get into the game. Oh, it's actually, they're actually changing the bowling now. Uh, Aftab actually bowling. It looked like Gilbert and Nabe was going to take the new ball, but Obviously a last minute change, whether that's actually part of the plans from Mohamed Nabi or whether he's decided to change on, on the hoof. I think one man they like to get early is uh, Hazrat Azai, the way he's batted because uh, he can really uh, get runs in the first six overs in the power play. So probably uh, just uh, thinking otherwise, that's the reason Aftab has been brought in. Really pulled very impressively uh, in the Asia Cup as well against uh, top teams in the world. So he's got that knack of picking wickets as a field setting for him. A deep mid wicket, uh, long on, and uh, near the uh, square leg empire as well. With that headband, his famous headband, uh, Aftab Alam. Slow delivery to start where that's put away. Oh, diving in way, and that's going to be the four. Fuck four here for Zazai. The first four for him. Yeah, good shot. Too much width on display there. And uh, this again, this boundary, this outfield very quick, the boundary very short, and it doesn't take too much hitting. If it clears that infield and the power play is definitely going to go for four. Actually, just watching Hadra Tula here, the, the similarities, I'm sure there'll be many similarities to Chris Gale made because he hits sixes. But actually, the way that he bats, the way that he's looking in it to, to score in particular areas is very similar to Chris Gale. Clearly, Chris Gale has played a lot more cricket, but actually, the way they go about batting is very, very similar. Got that big 100 versus Nangar. Once again, uh, not at the pitch of the ball, just making room for himself. We'll just pick up one more run. I think the big thing about him also, Dagi, is uh, the bat flow, the bat speed. is so tremendous. You see the surface? Looks to be a very good one. This is the same surface where the first semi-final was played. And I think the curator and the ground staff out here have done a great job. Because, uh, you know, 23rd game, you know, back-to-back, -back, never easy. They just played on two strips, two uh, surfaces out here in the Sharjah ground. And still, the binding is so good on this wicket. You can see the sheen, the famous Sharjah sheen on the wicket. Yeah, it's probably less uh, less of a mirror than it was when the tournament started, but you can still see it's still very shiny. And actually, when you stand on the wicket and, and, and touch the, the grass, the grass is very soft, which generally will tell you that the ball should come on really nicely. It is a phenomenal effort to play 23 matches and still to be producing a pitch like this one. Not timing it too well. That should be taken. And yes, that's the first wicket. Luke Ronke won't be happy. Aftab striking straight away in his first over. Going for the big one. Probably coming from the toe end of the blade. And Luke Ronke, after a bright start in the first over, has got to walk back. Yeah, I think a slow ball there just doing for Luke Ronke, trying to hit it over mid on. And very much off the toe of the bat. He'll be very, very disappointed. But very good bowling from Aftab. And a very simple catch at mid on. So unfortunately, for Kabul, the first wicket goes. Big player in Ronke. Ronke's gone. Gone for nine of six balls. It's 15 for one.
So once again, a promotion for Wayne Parnell coming at number three. He's played a few good knocks uh, coming at number three for the uh, Kabul Zwanan. He's a good striker, decent player. Really can talk the ball hard. 145 is strike rate so far in the APL. 42 is best. That came at uh, number three. Aftab, of course, striking early. Important wicket. Duke Ronke can be very dangerous with the bat. Another left-hander walks in. So two left-handers out there now, Dougie. Yeah, and that might actually play um, into Bulk Legend's hands. They they might go an extra over with uh, with the off spin, trying to beat the outside edge of the bat. We haven't seen any spins so far. But then again, Mohamed Nabi didn't try to spin the ball. Wayne Parnell is, is better than a pinch hitter. He's a very, very dangerous batter up front. Starting with a bouncer. And after showing his intent straight away. Sometimes a difficult thing to do, going in there as a, as, as a bowler who actually hits the ball really hard because... As a coach or a captain, you, you need to get bat on ball. You know that the power play is a very good time to score through the field. You don't always have to be looking to score over the field. Sometimes if you go in there as a, as a pinch hitter, if you like, the, the temptation is to try and get the ball airborne, maybe just a little bit too early. Once again, uh, pick up head edge there. We'll pick up one more run there. Good stuff from uh, Maria Sashraf. Does really well. The man who's been uh, very impressive uh, on the field with the ball. Picked up some important wickets uh, for his side. Yeah, he's got around the boundary very well. Ran a very good angle there. If he'd gone around the, the, the boundary boards, the ball would have probably gone for four. He ran a very good angle to pick it up and probably saved the next run. Good fielding. But just the kind of start you want, especially out of the first over where uh, Mohamed Nabi conceded 10 runs. You go, got a wicket, important wicket of Luke Ronke can be such a dangerous player up the order. Once again, Lord Levery, good uh, variation of pace, looking for that single, just sent back in time, all happening. Two overs gone, 16 for one. So most runs up in the APL, Mama Shahzad, of course, leading the pack 344. Zazai has a chance of uh, catching up and even crossing it. Laurie Evers 291, he's done really well with the bat for the Kabul side. And Tom Devsage, of course, he can't now uh, add to that. 270 for him. So leading uh, run getters, Mama Shahzad. Uh, what a treat when he's on song. Going to be uh, Mama Navi once again. And a slip in place as well. Now he'll both those off-spinners, isn't it, Dougie? Yeah, that's the that's danger of two left-handers at the crease. Nabi can bowl these off-spin. And you can see that the ball just gripping a little bit. Hasn't spun massively. But uh, that's the first ball that he's actually tried to spin. And there's certainly been a little bit of an offer there. We saw against the right-handers, he was curving the ball away like an outswinger. But now, of course, his usual stuff. The off-spinners, the ball just gripping. He's got to be careful, Wayne Parnell. He's a good striker. He's a, he's a decent bat. Oh, that's Rak. Yeah, straight to the fielder. Yeah. Bit of hesitancy in running in the end, all's well. Yeah, good single there. Slight confusion, last ball of the last over, and and then there as well. I think this um, this offside field. I think it's um, they're looking to try and squeeze as many singles as possible. Nabi trying to beat the outside edge, edge of the bat. Chris Gale standing at slip, looking for any any mishap. But again, they're looking to try and squeeze these Kabul batsmen for every single run. It would be in his mind, uh, Mama Nabi, that uh, even uh, yesterday they scored really well. Uh, Kabul, the way they batted, they came back very well, scoring 192 in the semi final against the Pakhtia Panthers. They have the depth in batting. Colin Ingram uh, really uh, batted well along with Rashid Khan. So they would like to restrict them under probably um, 170, 160, because uh, chasing anything over 180, 190 in a final, Dougie, the pressure is different. I think Chase is chasing anything over 140 in a final might be tricky. <laughs> Scoreboard pressure does really strange things to people. Yeah, you're right. That's the reason he opted to bat. Get runs on the board. That's a good strike. Very good effort. That might be referred. But diving there. Just thought probably uh, 
He's done a very good job out there. Just checking with the uh, third empire. Well, if he's saved a boundary, he's done very, very well. He's made up a lot of ground. He's, he's very wide at long on. And, and so far, that looks pretty good. Excellent fielding. Yeah, that's uh, Rasuli. Really batted well in the semi-final. Does very good, well there. Good commitment, sliding, diving, and saving some important runs for his side. Looks to be uh, okay at this stage. You see, uh, checking from another angle now. Just pushing uh, the ball in when he uh, slided for that. Probably just checking whether his hand was uh, touching the skirting or not. Yeah, it's a very good effort to that point. Maybe that's that right hand, the right elbow, just touching the the boundary rope. I think fairly inconclusive from this angle. We can't really tell. But it's, if it is going to be only two runs, well, it's these small margins that make a huge impact in the game. And very good fielding from the youngster. He has done well. Three of us gone. Nine in for one. In fact, uh, signaling uh, four as well. So, uh, that's the end of the over. we going to be uh, Aftar Balam from the uh, other end. The average first inning scores, uh, Dagi, in the APL is 172. So that shows the kind of surface it is throughout. We've had some low scoring games, some high scoring ones. But uh, the average score, 172. You know, they'll certainly be targeting more than 170. If they can get one of these batsmen in established at the crease, they are capable of way more than that. But this, this pitch, even just watching the first three, two or three overs, it looks like the ball's sticking in a bit more than what it has done previously to this point in the tournament and you know pitches they've had a lot of traffic on them and the ball if you do ball into the wicket the ball sometimes comes out slightly different speeds and that may be making it slightly more difficult for the batsman interesting to see the lengths that the bowlers have bowled so far into the wicket trying to target the top of the stumps he's not giving much pace to the batsman he's uh, bowling the slow deliveries those cutters they're exactly what he does very well and the death overs bowls those yorkers of Alam. his bowls are very good spells for his side the captain having a lot of confidence in his abilities hasn't taken too many wickets two for 14 versus Bakhtia against Nangar as well two for 26 but he's been economical well, there we go just slow ball to a bouncer and that's exactly what you need to do as a as a a brave bowler in this format of the game. You need to be, you need to be showing the batsmen that they can't line you up. And that's exactly what Aftab has done there. That's the second bouncer we've seen him bowl, and it's a good one as well. You talk about if you're going to bowl a bouncer, make sure you get it up in between shoulder and head high, and that's exactly what he's done. He's got a man at deep square leg. The final leg inside the circles. That's uh, Chris Gale. Oh, that's a good delivery. You just see the way he alters his length. Very clever. Good stuff here from Aftab Alam. Yeah, like I mentioned a minute or two ago, the danger of playing a pinch hitter is they just can't get bat on ball. Which, you know, it's all well and good hitting sixes and fours, but if you're not rotating the strike in between, you're going to leave yourself short. It, it may be that the pitch is slightly more difficult than what we, we can see from here, but not making contact is a bit of a cardinal sin from a batsman at this stage. I think just that it does for the side is it adds to the depth of the batting because you have someone, you know, even if he gets out, doesn't matter. But you're right, you know, losing uh, probably on a few deliveries because he's taken his time now, Parnell. Two of ten, exactly uh, what uh, the bulk legends are looking at, just to tie him up initially, stem the floor of runs, not give him easy runs. These are important overs. Remember, the power play in progress, just two fielders out of the circle. Yeah, and the most successful batsmen for Kabul have been the likes of Laurie Evans, Colin Ingram, Rashid Khan. And what you're doing is by playing... Oh, no, this might be a run-out opportunity. Oh, they've got, they've got home. Not, not the best throw from Naby. Scamper through for a single. After four overs, 22 for one. Certainly, offering a little. It's not right, but it's. 
Mr. Shafiq uh, Stanikzai, CEO of the Afghanistan Cricket Board, watching the proceedings. It's been a great effort by uh, everyone associated with this uh, Gul Bahar Afghanistan Premier League. The first edition, of course, we are uh, in the final game. Big game here. Mohammad Nabi has done very well. And I think uh, great thinking as well, uh, Dagi, that he's uh, persisting with himself. Bowling his third over now, just seeing both the left-handers out there. Panel struggling a bit. Very good move here from the captain. Yeah, both left-handers have been under pressure to Nabi. He's just offering a little bit of, out of the surface. And it's very difficult when the ball's spinning away from your outside edge. If he's bowling straight, you have to be taking a chance off the line of your stumps, which he's done in that occasion. And that's gone straight up in the air. And it's going to be a good catch by Nabi. Yes, great catch. And the second wicket. And that's a big wicket as well. Hadra Tula, the danger man in this partnership. I think a lot of dot balls being eaten up and he felt necessary to try and take it on. He wanted to break the shackles because uh, the runs weren't coming. Panel as well was taking a bit of time, going for the big one, not getting the elevation. And himself doing a very good job there, Mohamed Nabi. Good cotton ball, went high up in the air, never easy under lights. But he's really led from the front. Mohamed Nabi, Hazratullah would be disappointed out for 10. It's 23 for 2 now. So Colin Ingram, he walks in, played uh, a brilliant knock uh, yesterday in the semi-final, just coming back to form, such a good uh, fielder as well, 185 runs for him in the APL. Playing in the air, does pretty well on that occasion, Parnell making a move on, that's a maximum, fog maximum, Spagiza. Yeah, that's a very brave shot there. From Wayne Parnell, just lost the wicket the ball before. And this time he's actually looking to go with the spin, which is what Hajratula didn't do. He went across the line of the spin. On that occasion, Parnell getting his hand straight through, straight over mid off, and a beautiful six straight into the crowd. Exactly how he's got to go about. Once again, getting a bit of turn. That was the all spin up. Mixes it so nicely, Mama Nabi. That one just gripping the surface, I felt. Yeah, very much gripping in the surface and coming out very slowly as well, which makes it very difficult for these batsmen. I think they, they need to learn from the, the wicket of Hazratullah. And when they're playing spin, it, it's very important, I feel, that they actually go with the spin. They can still hit the ball for four and six, but it makes it difficult if they're going against the line of the spin. What he did on the last occasion was bring the uh, mid on fielder up inside the circle, the long overs back. Once again, varying his speed. This was the wicket of uh, Hazratullah Zazai. Goes for the big one, never getting that elevation. Immediately knew that he was in trouble there. The ball just uh, curling above, but he does very well. Cool as a cucumber, and uh, he's done a very good job. Decent overs from the captain straight away with the new ball, bowling his third one, one for 23. Ingram on strike for the first time. Good delivery, good over. Five gone is 30 for two. The highest score in the power play has been 97 for no loss, the lowest 38 for 2. It's going to be a change in bowling. Mirais Ashraf comes in, mentioned about him earlier. Always uh, he's got the knack of picking wickets, done really well. 13 wickets for him, uh, Dougie. Just here, they call me wonderful. Bowl to the death, 4 for 19 is best. So, what a player he's been for the uh, bulk legends. And he's a pretty handy bowler coming in at 30 for 2. I think the bulk legends will be the happier of the two teams at this stage. Certainly controlling this power play to this point. 
It'll be interested to see if if the batsman Wim Parnell has been sent out to do a job, if he looks to, to try and be the aggressor and, and not let Ashraf sort of settle into his role. That's good effort. Very good uh, commitment there. Throwing it straight away, releasing the ball very quickly. And that's so very important, Dougie. It is. I feel that if that had hit the stumps, that may have been a run out. Oh, absolutely. And Colin Ingram had given that up. But, and the throw was wide. It wasn't accurate. So they scamper through for a single. But the thing about uh, the Kabul side is they have someone like Laurie Evans, uh, Rashid Khan, who have done really well coming in the middle order. Laurie Evans are uh, so consistent with the bat. And you have been his coach as well this season, Dougie? All down to me, yeah. No, I'm delighted for the way Laurie Evans has played. Um, you know, I, I, I was coaching him at Warwickshire for six or seven years and he's, he's done very, very well. As we just look at the most wickets in the tournament, Udana having a fantastic tournament, 17 wickets. And you see that graphic. It's a very interesting graphic because you mentioned about Ashraf, of course, Udana has been special for the Pakhtia Panthers. No bowler from Kabul features there. So that's a big surprise for me, you know, because uh, you sh shows that really the wickets have been taken uh, by the Balgages bowler, Gulbadi Naib, you mentioned about him. Ashraf has been very successful as well, but no bowler there from the Kabul side. And that's a very good point, but they'll be looking towards their, their top performance. Rashid Khan, you would think, will be licking his lips watching this <laughs> this pitch behave the way it's behaving, you know, slow and, and spinning a little bit. And he has that mystery. He's performed really well in this format, in all formats, but all over the world. And uh, they'll be looking for him to, to make best use of this surface. But Rashid Khan, he's taken nine wickets, Wayne Parnell, uh, ten. So really, uh, they've done well reasonably, but uh, don't feature in that list uh, the highest wicket taker so far in the uh, Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League. But Rashid Khan, you know, he rises to the occasion whenever the opportunity is there. Mentioned about Jesse for Kabul, Wayne Parnell mentioned about him 10 wickets, Rashid Khan 9, Mostly Musa has done well 7, Farid Malik at times is bowled really well, chimed in with uh, some important spells, 6 wickets for him. Nicely played on the onside. So six overs gone. The power play gone is 34 for two. Fellow commentator Charu Sharma watching the proceedings, a smile as well, looking very relaxed. Six overs gone, 34 for two. This is the lowest power, power play score for the uh, Kabul side. Mohammad Nabi continuing once again, coming on for his last over. He's done such a good job. Stem the flow of runs, pick that big wicket of Hasdullah Zazai. Lowest score for the Kabul side and a big game like this, Dougie. What's your take? Well, it's a final and there are nerves, there's pressure and it's difficult out there at the moment. Certainly struggling against the off-spin of Mohamed Nabi. Left-handers finding it particularly tough. I'm, I'm just wondering whether Kabul Zawaman actually missed a bit of a trick by, by sending in a right-hander at the fall of the last wicket. Just to split up the, the dynamic of this partnership. We've seen left-handers so far and it has proved to be very difficult. But certainly bulk legends will be absolutely delighted where they are at the moment. Looking at the power play scores throughout the course of the tournament for Kabul, there's some pretty high numbers there. And today, it's, as you say, it's, a, it's the lowest number they've posted. In match number eight, uh, that was uh, versus Kandahar, they got 38 for two. Oh, all happening there. Uh, Mohamed Nabi making the Kabul batsman work really hard just to rotate strike and get a single. A slight misfield, that extra cover. And, oh, 
My goodness, everybody's in trouble. <laughs> the Empire was in the firing line. Anil Chaudhary had to save himself. Just uh, having a look there <laughs> towards the fielder. That's a good delivery. You know, this is the important thing. Uh, you know, as a bowler, bowl win the stumps. Don't give much room to the batsman. And exactly what you would be telling a Dougie when you're also coaching a few sides, the coach of the UAE national side. You know, just bowl win the stumps. You give that leverage to free your arms, then you're in trouble. Yeah, that's a good shot. Very, very good shot. I'm surprised he hasn't taken that shot on a bit, a bit before now. And it's running away for four runs. A really well executed paddle shot. And a very, very valuable boundary. And they've been very short so far. That's a lovely shot there from Colin Ingram. A very, very skillful player in this format of the game. Yeah, you're right. Great skills there. Never easy. Made it look so easy. Just uh, playing that cheeky shot, but uh, very nicely uh, executed by him. Not very happy, Mohamed Nabi. He's been so good so far. Fork four. Colin Ingram, the last few games, he's uh, just come back into form. He was struggled early on, didn't get too many runs in the Afghanistan Premier League. But the last uh, few innings have been pretty impressive from him. Getting a bit of turn, playing on the rise, running the first one hard. Will they come back? No, it's the call. Just settling for one to end the seventh over. It's 41 for two. He's done very well, hasn't he, Mohammed Nabi? 30 runs, but a very valuable wicket at the top of the order. And he'll be most pleased with uh, what his team has been able to achieve so far because uh, the Kabul batting is in trouble. Seven overs gone, only 41 scored. They're well behind par at this stage. And we'll see whether they can recover because I think anything under 160, 170, the bulk batting may be able to get pretty easily. Remember, they chased 177 earlier on in this tournament against the uh, Kabul Zwanan team. So Mirwa is now, who came in a little late to the party, has suddenly been among the wickets and big time. Doesn't bowl too quick, but uh, he has been among the wickets with his gentle medium pace. Obviously, he's got something special. Now squeeze a single away. So, um, you guys, I hope you're uh, enjoying your fantasy uh, team selections. MyTeam11.com is where you need to go. Create your own team, test your skills, and of course, win real cash. I hope you have been all the way through. Among the many that you may have wanted to include later is this man, Mirwais Ashraf. Given five runs away, but plenty of wickets for him. And in the commentary box, I'm delighted to have the company of Hashish Sethi, who is the, uh, what should I say, investment partner, of course, uh, the main man, in, along with the uh, Afghanistan Cricket Board, to long offer just a single. So, Ashish, congratulations. I'll tell you what, I am very impressed with what's happened so far. We're all, of course, following Afghanistan Cricket very closely. We are delighted that you got the league on track because I know the first year is just so difficult. So, I've got to congratulate you. Thank you, Charu. Thank you indeed. Yeah, and of course, I mean, there's a, a huge history behind all of this. So, uh, I'm sure some of the stories are, uh, again, probably just a single. Some of the stories you may not want to recount on television, but the other ones, especially the good ones. How long did it take you to get the whole thing going? I think this preparation has been close to over a year. We've been preparing for this day and uh, I'm pretty excited that today we have lived the dream together. Um, you know, Snigza Sports, Team Snigza Sports, Afghanistan Cricket Board, especially Shafiq, uh, and they're all board members. Uh, I'm glad we have lived it together. And of course, here we are to the final. 22 matches down. This is match number 23. Lots of preparation, hard work. And for you, it'd be terrific to see uh, the fruition of this. I mean, here we are in the final. We've had some terrific moments. We've enjoyed the league thoroughly. Some very close matches as well, which is what it's all about. You know, close matches eventually it grabs people. And of course, I believe in Afghanistan, uh, people are delighted with what's going on. I'm sure. I think we have had the best of the matches possible in any T20 league. 
and the kind of run chases we have had, the kind of six sixes in an over we have had, uh, and hat trick, uh, highest run uh, scored in UAE. Uh, then there's another record, highest run chased in UAE. So I think uh, there's almost half a dozen records we have made in this 23 matches. Well, how lucky was Colin Ingram there? Terrific delivery by Mirwais and uh, very full. Colin, for a moment, might have expected it to crash onto his stumps. And he thrashes it again. Will it find the gap? No, still can't. It's a run making very difficult. It continues, continues to be for Kabul's one on. A decent over by Mirwai Ashraf. And uh, we got 46 for two after eight. The broadcast of the uh, Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League, powered by FOG, going around the world. Ariana and Afghanistan, of course, very importantly, D Sport in India and uh, other partners in many other parts of the world. Uh, thank you for all for joining us. I hope you're enjoying our telecast of this inaugural Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League, powered by FOG. I've got Ashish Sethi still here with me. Uh, just your partnership with the Af Afghanistan Cricket Board. You, you know, it's been new. You didn't have any sporting experience before this, but uh, how? Uh, have you enjoyed that partnership and, and, and making new friends? It's been a fantastic journey. As I again said, thank you uh, to the Afghanistan Cricket Board. They did not only handholded us, they, they mentored us in a very professional manner and a friendly manner. They never let us uh, realize that we are a startup and you know we were doing it they've been very professional they've been supporting and today um, I'm, I'm very happy because of afghanistan cricket board that snigzar has been able to deliver a world-class t20 league which is in front of you absolutely right i mean there's nothing short of world class here it's been very well organized and of course the telecast itself by sportsworks from india they've done a fantastic job we'll try and show you some of the stars we'll be in behind the camera all the way through clubbed behind the bowler Oh, how welcome is that boundary? It's been a while. A fog salu reza. That's what couples want to need. So Wayne Parnell finally getting an opportunity. He's clubbed it behind Gulbadin Naib, who's uh, come in afresh from the opposite end, giving couples one and supporters something to cheer about because this is going to be a tough day just from uh, what we've seen so far. By the way, this pair put on 70 the last time they played against Bulk. Oh, down leg, no appeal either, and they will steal a single. The throw came in pretty sharp. And Ashish also for Afghanistan cricket, what a uh, development. I mean, their youngsters are showing that they have great depth, lots of young stars as well. There's that shy coming in. And, uh, you know, the Afghanistan cricket board ought to be really pleased that you guys have put this together because it's such a terrific, terrific platform for the youngsters. I'm, I'm really glad, trust me, the kind of uh, raw talent pool Afghanistan has, this is next to no, none, none, any, any test playing nation. So Gulbadin Naib, who has picked up plenty of wickets, Tarzan we call him, little expensive in his opening over, another Fog Saluriza, that's a boundary, uh, it was drifting down leg full and uh, all Ingram had to do was put a little bit of bat onto it, fine leg was uh, inside the circle and a very welcome boundary yet again. Yeah, you got the timing perfectly right. Um, of course, we were talking about Afghanistan cricket, uh, Ashish. Just so many other youngsters showing that they have the skill, they have the depth, they have the hunger. Indeed, look at the performances they have had. It's just a matter of time when you'll have half a dozen of Nabi, half a dozen of Rashid and much more. Will that be three? Yes! So that's three fog sun raisers in one over. Wayne Parnell. Uh, did a bit and then Colin Ingram now in the act. Ingram uh, took a little bit of time to settle down. Obviously, uh, the pitch may be just a little more difficult to read than we may have imagined, but that was again full and a uh, little bit of width that he created, able to get uh, the power behind that shot. No chance for long on. Again, trying to get it past all oh, this direct hit and Ingram would have been running back to the pavilion after of course 
gutted that he did not find the target. But nine overs gone now. It's 61 for two, getting a little better for Kabul's one on. So, after unfortunately missing, but uh, Ingram would have gone. Now, I still have Ashish Sethi here with me. Ashish, you know, commercially speaking, I can understand because I know a thing about, you know, getting leagues going. It must have been really tough to begin with. Uh, it was tough. Indeed, it was tough, but I'm very uh, thankful to all my sponsors. Uh, Gulbahar back from Afghanistan, Fog from our country, India, um, all the other sponsors to the teams, uh, Cricking If, D Sports, all the other broadcasters, much more. This was the testing season. Uh, I thank you all of those who stood by me in this testing times, who, who have lent their support and I have shown faith in my, uh, my capabilities to support me in the first year. Next year, I'm sure the, it is going far better. Oh, oh brilliant! Uh, Mirwais Ashraf, right there when it mattered, got plenty of wickets for the ball and now a stunning catch, he ran forward just in time, it was hit hard and low, but it did go straight to deep square and Ingram will be so disappointed, the ball was short and it needed to be pulled, but Mirwais Ashraf was uh, stationed at just the right place, caught it with one hand, took the roll and isn't Ravi Papara, who was the change here from the pavilion and delighted, this is a big wicket. Colin Ingram has scored plenty of runs for Kabul's one on. Now gone. Caught Ashraf or Bopara for 21 from 19. A little difficult for him today. 61 now for three. Javed Emadi walks in, his team in all sorts of trouble. So, uh, 9.2 overs, uh, they've got only 61 going along for the moment at 6.5. They probably need, uh, as I've said before, 160 or so. We'll see as Ravi Bopara continues. Mirwais Ashraf, what a standout performance here. Even got a few runs with the bat, can hit the ball a long way. I still have Ashish Sethi here with me of Snixer Sports. And uh, I just want to let you know that if you've been talking to some of the sponsors, I hope they realize that they're getting great value because you've got a terrific tournament going on. Yes, indeed. I think I've been very happy with the response uh, the sponsors have been getting. They got, they got a good value for money in this season. And that gives us more confidence that more people will join us in coming, coming seasons and they'll equally be happy. Without doubt. And uh, some unasked for advice, again, if you don't mind. Patience is such a key word here when we're you know, doing new leagues, new things and new ventures. You know all about that because of your ventures uh, in the past. Terrific catch, Mirwais. Well done. Big man. Not easy for him to go down low and take that catch. So I'm sure pe more people will join in commercially. It just takes time for the commercial circles to, to build and develop. Indeed, indeed. I think this is just like any sports asset. It, it, the first mover has certain advantages and the first movers also have a couple of doubts, the people who do not join initially. And th there are people who are willing to join us in coming days. <laughs> Chris Gale, well, we weren't expecting him to go, go for the dive, just to put a foot in there saying, well, I'll be okay with a little bit of football. And finally, of course, you're doing this, uh, Ashish, because you, you, you are a cricketer yourself. You're playing some cricket these days. You get a few odd matches going once in a while. Yes, I, I still captain a team, club team called JCCI and that's where the passion has been. 15 years into that cricket, still going strong and that sums it all. The passion has taken me here. Yeah, without passion, where will we be? Also smartly fielded by Mirwais, patrolling the uh, cover boundary for the right-handers. And Ashish, I just want to take this opportunity to once again thank you and all those at Snixer Sports who work with you, the Afghanistan Cricket Board. You guys are on to um, a winning formula here. I think Afghanistan Cricket is delighting the world. 
and they needed their own league and you guys have made it happen so congratulations thank you charu thank you to all the crew members everyone and this has been a fantastic journey of apl season 1 and we see you all of you back next year so yeah. well i'll be delighted thank you i want to invite myself but <laughs> thank you i'll be very happy to be here again and again because of just the global belief in afghanistan cricket i mean they are so hungry they are strong people they've done very well with their cricket so far last ball of the over and uh, they try and sneak a quick single now that could be gone had he struck oh well, what was amadi thinking there was a little bit of a hesitation there but that was never on they chanced it anyway halfway stage 65 for 3 Ahmed coming on from the Sharjah club end that's a really good record remember he didn't play the first match of uh, the tournament because he was being um, in action in the uh, under 19 Asia Cup and there he is throwing at the stumps and goodness me Javed Amadi would have been gone for all money there real mix up with uh, Wayne Parnell but I've been really impressed with Kais Ahmed couple of three wicket hauls for him in the tournament both of them against nangahar yeah. bold first ball that case armed bowls and he strikes wayne parnell a little bit frustrated he was in as the pinch hitter and he wasn't really getting the ball away scoring at less than a run a ball in fact tried to improvise and that improvisation has been his downfall alongside me ajay mera and kais ahmed impresses again yeah you're right i think he's been terrific fast delivery uh, trying to uh, play a cheeky shot missing the line completely and what a start for the young man he will be delighted first ball a wicket for him will be a high on confidence panel uh, would be disappointed just getting a start or able to convert it out for 21 it's 65 for four now Lori Evans in at number 6 only one player for Kabul Zwanan has scored more runs in this tournament that's uh, Hazratul Azazai he's been outstanding Evans but they need a big innings from him now the advantage i guess is he's got time here just a shade under 10 overs so he can get himself in and we know how dangerous he can be if he does that a slip in position now a little bit of turn I think Bolk no if they can get Evans here they really are in the pound seats but uh, well the less said about that shot from Wayne Parnell the better Yeah you're right I think poor shot selection because uh, this was a uh, premeditated from him going for that cheeky shot missing the line Once again uh, that's a played very really nicely going to be a fog for playing with the turn Lori Evans he's been in terrific touch such a key member in this uh, batting lineup for the Kabul side and uh, starting off with a very good four just getting the elevation he wanted uh, just over the cover area lovely bat flow such a good player against spin as well lori evans still got a slip in place in uh, chris gale but a fumble out there resulting in a single uh, would be uh, wanting their his wicket early on the wicket of lorry evans uh, the bulk legends well lorry evans uh, will have happy memories about playing against bolt with that 64 from 47 balls 
And that was in a blazing stand with uh, Rashid Khan, which gave them something to bowl at. In the end, they still lost that match. Tactic here, surely, with four wickets down, is probably just to knock it around for, for two or three overs, just consolidate, score to run a ball, and then look to be explosive in the last five or six, I would guess, Ajay. Yeah, the average score in the first innings, uh, Brian, has been 172 so far in the APL. Remember, it's a final game as well. The pressure will be uh, there when you're chasing. 11 overs gone, 72 for four. Decent numbers in here at the Sharjah Cricket Stadium this evening for this final of the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League. And Ravi Bopara, impressive already this evening. He's had a terrific all-round tournament. So effective. Remember, a couple of years ago, he got six for 16 on this ground for Karachi in the Pakistan Super League. Oh, that's a very good delivery as well around the All-Star, beating the bat there, Laurie Evans. Let's go down to uh, Hamid and see where he is. Last day of the Afghanistan Premier League. Let's know from the fans, are they going to miss Afghanistan Premier League? Afghanistan Premier League is the last day. I don't think that the tournament is going to be very good. The most important thing is that 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 the most important thing is uh, who's your favorite player and favorite team? My favorite player is Rashid Khan and my favorite team is Kabul. I am supporting today Kabul. Thank you so much. So they wanna, they're going to miss this Afghanistan Premier League this year and they wish next year will happen again. And the lady says their favorite team is Kabul Zona and his favorite cricketer Rashid Arman. Back to commentary box. Thanks, Hamid, and thanks to those spectators. Lovely bit of drawing that, uh, Ajay. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, of course, some great uh, stars, some uh, brilliant performers uh, playing in this uh, final. Ryan, it's going to be a treat because, uh, you know, they have done really well. Uh, both the semi-finals, uh, you know, both the teams winning comprehensively. So, they'll be high on confidence, of course, uh, head-to-head. Bulk have uh, the big advantage, winning both the uh, games in the league phase, the two matches. Of course, this uh, being the final, it's uh, always going to be different. The pressure is different. Such a big occasion. That's played well. He's looking in good touch at the moment, uh, Laurie Evans. Yes, the, uh, the two victories that uh, Bulk enjoyed. They beat Kabul by eight wickets, chasing 177 to win. And then, of course, they got the highest score of the tournament, 244 for six. Kabul managed to get 223 for seven in response, but it was a pretty forlorn chase that going after 245. Nabi in consultation with Bopara. And as a result of that, mid-wicket being sent out onto the boundary. Somebody's going to have to come up into the ring now because we've only got two fielders inside the circle on the offside and one on the leg. And in fact, mid-off is uh, now coming inside the 30-yard circle. But a very good over so far from Bopara. Goes for the big one. Uh, straight at the field, uh, shying at the uh, North Strikers and missing it. But a very good over. 12 gone, it's 76 for four. Thank you. 
ऐसे So not a great start here for the Kabul side. They've lost wickets. Uh, Luke Ronki up the order. Kundu March has his eye as well out for 10. Uh, Parnell 21. Sent as a pinch hitter. Ingram was a big wicket. Emily and Laurie Evans at the crease at the moment. 76 for 4. And with me in the com box, I've got a very, very special guest. The captain of the uh, Pakhtia Panthers, Mohamed Shazad, was really batted up terrifically. Of course, was unlucky yesterday, but that's part and parcel of the game. You lost yesterday, Mohamed Shazad, but you won the hearts of everybody, isn't it? Uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Yeah, uh, we lost the game, but uh, we're learning something from the foreign players, and now we are here in commentary box. <laughs> you know your style of batting. You know it's absolutely a pleasure to watch. Yeah, that uh, hand-eye coordination, the way you were hitting the ball, and throw the tournament. You know you were in uh, terrific form. Most runs in the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League. Of course, uh, Laurie Evans as well, he's done very well. But uh, the way you started off, you know, the confidence behind you and coming off uh, pretty well from the Asia Cup as well. And this man, 344 runs, Mohamed Shahzad. What a pleasure. Most runs in the Afghanistan Premier League. Yeah, uh, I'm really happy to see Azra Zaze in the second high scorer because we need some youngster in the T20. Uh, so it's very good, uh, good to see some Afghani players in the top in the league and we play first time this league and the two Afghani in the list. And that's a very important point you make uh, because after all, uh, Mohammed, it's all about adding to the bench strength, isn't it? You know, you've done so well for Afghanistan, um, but it's always uh, because of these leagues, you want to create that bench strength, you know, a few youngsters coming up the ranks. It's always important for any nation, isn't it? Yeah, of course, it's very important, for, especially for Afghanistan. So we found some young talent. Uh, you saw Hazra Zaze and in the middle of fielder is uh, Darvesh Rasuli. He played very good cricket the last couple of games. So we're really happy for watching this youngster. That's played really well. Slow delivery, picking up very nicely. Good effort as well in the deep. Leading from the front, uh, Mohamed Nabi. But, you know, coming back to the Pakhtia Panthers side, uh, a few players... Uh, few Afghanistan players who would have really impressed you. Mohamed Shahzad, who are they? Uh, in the Pakhtia team, uh, we have a lot of uh, youngsters like you can see the fast bowler, we, we call him Morkal. Uh, Yusuf Zaze is a very good fast bowler. So, uh, not only in the uh, Pakhtia team, we saw in the old tournament, uh, very good talent is coming up in the this league. Okay, one thing I want to know, uh, Shahzad, is uh, when you go into bat, you know, being an opening batsman myself, you know, I was used to think that how I have to get my first runs or how to really settle in into the innings. What's your thinking? What does Mohamed Shahzad think when he walks into bat? Uh, honestly, I'm not thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not thinking because you saw my first uh, test runs is uh, coming from the boundary. So, I just go and uh, waiting for loose delivery. Some of the people... Uh, I'm same for me. I'm uh, watch the ball and hit the boundaries. That's simple. Absolutely simple. Very simple. Very and, simple. And, and you know, just before the game, at times you're playing against that opposition. You're playing against a very quality side. Do you have uh, you know some thought in your mind that this bowler I'm going to face him the next day? I have to plan my innings or just you know just whatever the conditions are, whatever the surfaces, whoever the bowler is, nothing doing. Uh, in in Asia, uh, I'm not using the mind. I just saw the pitch and opposition bowler. And you know, sir, uh, we play a lot of cricket in the Sharjah. My half career play in Sharjah cricket ground. So I love play cricket here. So I know the boundaries, how long for the which side and uh, very good uh, batting pitches. Well, continue the chat in the next over as well. 13 overs gone. It's 84 for 4. Asia, 
So 30 numbers gone, 84 for 4. Evans and uh, Ahmadi trying to build a partnership here. Kaz Ahmad uh, was very impressive in his opening over, getting the important wicket of Parnell. Average first inning score uh, so far in the APL, 172. They need a partnership, they've got to build a partnership. The crowd's building in such a big occasion here. The final of the Gulbahar of Ghansan Premier League. Both the teams have done really well so far. One over, seven runs. Very impressive. Uh, Kaisa as well, Mohamed Shazad. Yeah, Kaisa Ahmad is a very talented player. Uh, you saw him in Caribbean League. He's doing very well. So, I'm very impressed for him. And he also played domestic cricket with me uh, three or four months before. He's very good talent. Very good talent. I think the variations he's got, that's uh, been very impressive. And also... Uh, the way he handles that pressure, we saw him even today, the way he's uh, bowled so far. But, you know, Shazad, coming back to the rise of Afghanistan cricket, the way you have progressed as a side, that must be really heartening for you personally as well. Yeah, of course. Uh, we play a lot of cricket. Uh, that's why day by day we improve. You, you saw in the Asia Cup, we play first game against Sri Lanka. We beat them. And he also, I think, so four or five time champion in Asia. So, when we play with the big teams, so every day we're learning something for uh, the big teams. Yeah, this was a wicket for uh, Kaz. Very impressive. Getting a bit of turn as well. And firstly, that 100 versus India. That must be very satisfying, isn't it? Yeah, of course. A uh, team like India and against uh, India, a very good side and make a hundred in very hot weather like 46, 47. Uh, I saw the old team, they have uh, some uh, uh, injury issues because of the hot weather. But Alhamdulillah, uh, we play a lot of cricket before Asia Cup here. We play four practicing games. So we used to this condition. So I'm very, very happy to make a hundred and team like against India. But you mentioned a very good point, you know, batting uh, in uh, Asia, but when you're batting outside, you know, especially in the different conditions in Australia, like you did in the World Cup as well, there the thinking as a batsman is uh, different, uh, Shazad? Yeah, of course, when we play like uh, England, Scotland, Ireland, there is uh, then thinking is uh, changed because the, in Asia, ball not swinging and not seeming. When we go to the England and next year, we have a World Cup in the head in uh, England. So we go before the World Cup, uh, we doing some practice there and we used to with the pitches and swing the ball. So inshallah, we will do best. Absolutely. And really, you have the team as well. Great spinners in your ranks, some quality batsmen and fantastic seamers. 14 overs gone, 88 for 4. So the current run rate is uh, hovering around 6, 6.29 to be precise, uh, projected score 125 but they still have wickets in hand. They have someone like Rashid Khan still to come, big uh, players in the ranks, Kabul, they like to uh, get at least 160, 170. Going to be uh, Bopara once again, he's been a uh, very tidy economy of four. Oh, trying a cheeky shot, does well. That's a Spagiza, what a strike there. Ahmadi coming to the four. Fog maximum, picks up the length very quickly and what a shot, Shazad. Reminds me of Mama Shazad, the way he bats. Yeah, it's very good shot and using his pace and very good shot from Javed Ahmadi. Uh, Javed Ahmadi have a very good batsman, we have uh, the opener batsman, so the game is going on. But what do you think, uh, Shazad, should be a good score on this surface because uh, they haven't started off well. They lost early wickets, 65 for 4 at one stage. What do you think should be a decent score in a big game? Yeah, it's a final game, is very under pressure game. Uh, but very, ex uh, I'm very excited to uh, saw the Rashid batting when he come and he do something for team and 
160, 170 is very good total in this pitch because this is the final match and they have universal balls but Rashid Khan is also the other side. So, it's 160 and 170 is very good total. That's a very nice uh, words for him as well. Dil Dil Kabul Jaan, Jaan Jaan, Rashid Jaan, Jia. Really something uh, same about Mohammad Shahzad as well. He's the Jaan for everybody. But really, I'm very happy to show Rashid Khan, Mohammad Nabi and Mujib. Uh, the people love him, the way he play in the BPL, IPL. So it's a very proud moment for us when Nabi play, when Rashid play and we watching back home and we pray. When Rashid ball, we jumping in the uh, in the home and where are we sitting, so we jumping with the every ball. When Nabi ball, when Mujib ball, so it's a really proud moment for us as well. They play in the all round the world in the leagues. You know that's the thing about Rashid Khan. He's rightly said even yesterday. You know the team was under pressure. You were captaining uh, Pakistan Panthers, and the cameo he played uh, Rashid Khan absolutely brilliant. The runs he scored, then the way he fielded those overs from him. Once again, does almost identical there. That's going to be a 4, not a 6. But really getting runs now. Ahmadi, some useful runs near the 100 mark, Kabul. Yeah, scoring going very quickly now uh, to boundary in this hour. Javed Ahmadi, once again, Dil Scoop, uh, very, uh, very care careful uh, this shot because uh, Bopara have a reverse swing with the ball. So, very careful uh, when you play this shot. I'm very scaring when uh, play this shot. Yeah, you're right, absolutely, because uh, you're taking a lot of risk, isn't it? It's not easy. And someone like Mohammad Shahzad, when you can hit in front, why play these shots? Both are our beloved brothers and crown of our head, absolutely fantastic. Some great players uh, from Afghanistan, one sitting with me. Oh, that's uh, streaky, but they all count. The 100 up with that strike, with that fog four. What a over it has been. Bopara before this one was so economical, but suddenly things change in T20. Shazad? Yeah, of course, nobody knows in the T20, one hour uh, in the batting side, do well and change the game. One hour like uh, we pl play against Nabi team, so the run rate is going in eight. One hour, uh, what is called the bowler, I don't know, but uh, he's doing very good over, so suddenly change the match like this. Oh, goes for the big one. What a strike for Maximum Shpagiza to end the over. Thanks, Shazad, for joining us. It was a pleasure chatting with you. 15 gone is 108 for 4. Thank you very much, Amida. Right, big game, 15 hours gone, 108 for 4. This partnership is building so well. And the projected score, if they go for 7 around, 143. Kais Ahmad is his third over. He bowled really well, 2 hours, 11 runs, 1 wicket. What a big day today for both sides. And welcome, Charu, alongside with me. Thank you, Hammer. Things are suddenly looking a little better for Kabul's one and they started out very slow and for a while it looked like even 125 was uh, going to be difficult. Jumps out, Miss Gun! Harry <laughs> Evans jumped out going for the big one, head up in the air, was going for 100 meter six. Instead, there was a little bit of spin for Kess. Laurie Evans missed the line completely. He'll be very embarrassed to see that and uh, very easy for Ikram. They lose another very important wicket here, Hammer. Such a huge wicket, the man in form for Kabul Zonan. Every single innings he got runs and this is a suicide down the wicket. The partnership was building, but finally they got the breakthrough. World ball Kais Ahmed, Lori Evans, 14 after 15 ball, 108 for 5. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, just when we thought that Kabul's one on were piling it on, they lose a very important wicket. Shahidullah walks in at number seven. Guess Ahmed now two for 11 from 2.1 overs. Has the youngster done very well for his team? Mohammad Nabi starting things out with one for 30. Went uh, for all four of his overs straight away. And now KS Ahmed is delivering for his skipper. I've got uh, Hamid Hammer Hassan here next to me, uh, former Afghanistan fast bowler. I shouldn't say former. And of course, captain. Well, but uh, wh why do you think uh, Rashid Khan didn't come into the fall of this wicket? Here it is again. Yeah, just uh, did not move into the line. What was he thinking? But plenty of turn for KS. Absolutely, plenty of turn. And Rashid will be very happy to see this. Because they're going to ball next. And I have to say, well ball to Cass. The way he judged and the ball tossed it up. Lori Evans couldn't make it to connect the ball. As you mentioned, Rashid, why he didn't come for the bat. Maybe because of uh, the leggy ball is coming inside. And uh, it, for him, it will be easy to swing. So upcoming Rashid, Musa, hard hitter. And as you know, Rashid, yesterday he had a brilliant knock. The ninja cuts, my favorite. <laughs> you bet, and that's why I think even on a leggy, those ninja cuts will actually work. Across the line, now he doesn't get enough of it, straight to deep mid wicket. And Mirwais Ashra picks up another catch, easy as ever, well inside the boundary line. And Ahmadi will be so disappointed. Hitting across the line against the spinner, getting fair amount of turn. Well, it wasn't the most clever shot, but uh, he trusted himself to get it over the boundary and did not succeed. What you have done, Javed, crucial wicket for a bulk and a crucial time. He should go for another two hours, but he was in such a rush and hurry. And this man, little Kais Ahmad, the youngster, as Shazad mentioned before, such a brilliant talent, got another wicket. A well catch from Mirwais Ashraf. 32 of just 19 ball, 109 for six. In walks the skipper, the talisman of his team, has done everything that could be expected. Got plenty of wickets, kept the runs down when he was bowling, and of course, look at that. 170 by the skipper and a strike rate of over 200. That's very special batting. However, he walks in here when his team's in trouble, again at number 8 this time. Oh, well, ball the wrong gun to greet Rashid, and uh, that was a tight one. But a uh, very good call from uh, Shahidullah took off straight away and that's the best ever figures in t20 cricket for kesamat so far he's bowled only three three for 13 for him after 16 110 for six Twenty wickets in his T20 career. It's still very, very young. Of course, economy under seven. He'll be very pleased to see that. And uh, today, in the final of the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League, those are his three wickets. And top order wickets are that. He will be delighted. Uh, Hamid, what a talent for Afghanistan! Huge talent, a brilliant talent for Afghanistan. 
And as you always see him in a smile with happy face, it's a good ball. Outside edge, it's one run. Mirwais Ashraf, the leading wicket taker for Balkh. Well, Aftab got into a little bit of trouble earlier on when his knee got caught in the grass here, but uh, luckily he seems to have uh, gotten over that minor injury threat and even came back to ball. A couple of overs. Very strong fella. And he's an aggressive cricketer. The way he's playing now, it's a big game final. And he knows how much important for him, for the team. He all the time in the game and enjoying his cricket. Mirwais Ashraf, 2.1. Just 10 runs he gave. Always economical. Well, Hamid, I've stopped saying strong for everybody or anybody in Afghanistan because they all are very strong. Very no tough. No doubt. <laughs> Oh, the slow one, full toss, that's gone to the mid-wicket boundary, taken, oh. and <laughs> pushed in by this Carter. Very clever work, and if he were a little taller, maybe he would have taken that and stayed, but still, well done, Ryan Tendish Carter, saving his team plenty of runs, unfortunately for him, overbalancing, and he knew he'd go over. If it 